Today we have the potential to qualify for the knockout rounds of the Champions League. Which I kind of wasn't expecting this season. Hello and welcome to Club 5 Part 18 of Non-League to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we are away against Southampton in the Premier League and then at home against Zenit in the Champions League. You seem to be very high above me. Let's tilt you down ever so slightly. Um, since you were last with me, uh, form has been pretty good. Um, four straight wins in all competitions. I mean, only two of them are in the Premier League, but it all helps to push us back up towards the right end of the Premier League after our little stumble in the last episode. We did stumble again, though, against Chelsea. I, well, I say stumble. We were completely outclassed and battered by Chelsea. Um, in our last game. So on the 11 game mark, we find ourselves in 10th place, which on the face of it, over a quarter of the way into the season, feels a little bit disappointing. However, if we compare it to the pre-season prediction, 11th, so we're still overachieving. Uh, the board are just looking for mid-table. And in actual fact, we're still only three points outside of a Champions League spot. So we string three, four wins together, and we're right back up in the mix before the halfway point of the season. So I'm not worried yet, and I'm excited about what's going on in the Champions League. I don't know why I can't navigate to it. How do the buttons work on this machine? Champions League. Is that... There we go. So our Champions League group, after four games, we are top of the group. Uh, three points clear of Benfica, who are in second place, four points clear of Inter. So if we beat Zenit... We qualify. We could even potentially win the group today, which I still want to show you the intermatch. So we're going to have quite a we're going to have some squashed together episodes today and tomorrow because, regardless of what happens today, I want to show you Inter because we didn't we haven't seen either of the intermatches. If I give that a miss, and that feels like a missed opportunity to have a little look at Inter, and we could maybe combine it with. Let me know down in the comments whether you'd want to see it with the West Brom match in the Premier League. Or with a Carabao Cup quarter-final. Really? Carabao Cup quarter-final? Right, anyway, this is... Are we even on match day? We're not even on match day. What has happened here? Give me a minute. We're like two weeks away from match day. Lazy, lazy past Kev. Okay, I didn't even apply for this. I, I mean, I should have been. But I haven't even been looking at job vacancies. So Lazio and Liverpool, both available. Liverpool, we've been talking about it in the comments all week, have had a terrible, terrible start to the season. Steven Gerrard currently is caretaker manager. But they've just offered me an interview. This is, I think this is the first time in non to Legend this year that I've been offered an interview without applying for a job. Well... This this episode could be about to take an unexpected turn. Um, we might not see Inter after all. Uh, right. Um, yeah, the majority of my career, I'm smaller clubs my eye. We're in the Champions League. You're not. Um, I suppose, perhaps that's not the right attitude to take into the interview, though. Um, can you tell me why managing at a number of clubs, as you have done, is a good thing? Well, because if I hadn't have done, I'd still be at Alfreton and you wouldn't be offering me this interview. Um, I've had a long career and it's only expected that in my time I've had a, I've not really had, uh, wide experience, yeah. Why have you felt acceptable? I haven't applied for any jobs. I have done it in the past, but I haven't applied for this one. Um, ambitious, yeah. I have not been involved in controversies. This is, I mean, if you're in a save for long enough, they turn against you, apparently. Um, I've learned from those mistakes. I'm in full on interview mode now. We want to ensure the dressing room atmosphere is much better than it was under our previous manager. Well, that's fine. I'll do that. Comfortable working with limited resources. I thought you were Liverpool. Explain. Where's the money gone? Um, I know. I've, yeah, of course. I'm well known for looking after club finances. What do you mean? Um, yeah, I'll work with the director of football. Can he do all the work for me? Um, I don't need to make any changes. Um, I can sign young players for the first team. I don't mind that. I don't really want to have to sign high-profile players, though, so we'll just leave it at that one. I mean, I, I've got to say, I don't think, I don't think they're limited resources. Um, nearly four million pounds on the wage bill. Allowed to pay over three hundred pounds. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if given the job, I'd be able to. I mean, what are they actually looking for? I would be able to meet the expectation of avoiding relegation. Yeah, of course I will. 
81 million. This is limited resources. Oh, I'm living in a different universe with Leicester. Yeah, I think that'll be plenty. Five million pounds a week wage budget. We might be able to scrape through. Goodness me, I want this job now. Well, I guess now we wait and see. There's 11 days before the next match. There's every chance that we might not have a match today. Um, Storaro, shut your face. I'll deal with him off camera while I go and see if I've got a red tie to go and turn up at Liverpool with. Well, why invite me to interview and get my hopes up if you're going to go and do that? Who on earth is this guy? Don't even know who you are. Inter. Interesting. So they'll be even easier to beat. If it hang about. Inter. Interesting. Is it interesting? They're in the Champions League. Unlike Lazio. I might just apply for Inter. Yeah. Let's let's apply for Inter. And this has turned into a job hunting episode. That wasn't supposed to happen today. Well, back to normal service. Apologies for the thumbnail clickbait. Unless, of course, I end up at Inter by the end of the episode. In which case, yeah, I put Liverpool on the thumbnail, probably. But I still change jobs. Um, this is the team that we're putting out there against Southampton. We're going counter-attacking, unstructured. We've got Svilar in goal. A back four of Leo, Kostic, Panzo and... <laughs> now, I've had... About six different pronunciations of people in the comments all telling me their way is right. You lot don't know how you say his name. You all have different ideas. I might have to set up a straw poll or something. For now, from now, I'm just going to continue to call him <laughs> at the at right back. Then Portanova, Gasparetti and Onomaru in midfield with Moya in behind Cesar and Miller. Paolo Cesar, by the way, he's he's emerged as a as a player. He's scoring goals which is very unlike him. He's playing games. I said on the last episode I'd give him a run of games. I've given him that run of games, or he's still in the process of that run of games, and he's actually taking advantage of his time in the team, starting to play quite well. Fingers crossed, touch wood, he's staying injury-free, and he's starting to score goals as well. If we can get him back to where he was two years ago before the injury problem started then him and Miller are going to be an incredible front two. With Moyer in behind, that's the attack sorted. Midfield is already sorted. And then we just need to bring in a, probably one centre-back and we have a proper Champions League team on our hands here. It's a big it's a big if, though, with Cesar because we all know that his next injury problem is only just around the corner. And as soon as he gets one, because of his track record of always getting a recurrence of the injury, always picking up another injury in recovery, then if he gets one knock, that will be him out for the rest of the season because it will just start a snowball effect of injury upon injury upon injury. And we don't really want to go down that road with him again. I think if we have that... If we have that happen one more time, not only are we going to see his transfer value plummet even further than it already has, then I think I think we also seriously have to consider just moving him on at whatever price just to get him out of the squad because he's using up a squad place. We talked in the last video about bringing Adonis in, who's not in our squad at the moment, but get rid of Cesar, bring Adonis back into the squad. At least we know what we get with Adonis. Um, albeit he's quite injury prone himself at least we know when he's in the team he'll score goals so there's uh, quite a lot of pressure on Cesar although I mean it's a game he can't hear me talking there's no pressure on him at all he just thinks oh I'm getting game time yay me but in my head there's pressure and he's I mean he's doing alright at the moment 0-0 nil -nil at half time we, I mean we're not doing full on boring boring Leicester we're not on defensive but at the same time we only have two shots in the entirety of the first half a win today could push us back up into a Champions League spot. Southampton are above us, though. They're one of the better teams in the division. And uh, a draw would be a perfectly acceptable result. I don't mind coming away from here with a draw. I know it's I know it's boring, but you know, now we've seen now we've seen the resources that relegation threatened Liverpool have got at their disposal. Perhaps it becomes a little bit easier to understand why we're why we're quite so limited in what we can do at Leicester. Because there's, I mean, the rest of the Premier League have all this money to spend in these deep squads full of players, and I don't have that. Um, triple substitution o'clock. Marvellous stuff. Get some fresh legs in that midfield. Get a, 
get another striker on. Evan Watts scored in the last game against Chelsea, I think. So he's he's starting to look a little bit more threatening. If anything, on recent form, if we look back over the last three or four games, Miller is the one most in threat of losing his place in our in our front line at the moment because he's kind of still there off the back of that form at the end for the last ten games a year and a half ago. And because we can't afford anyone better and because he's English and because he's got all that potential. But Gareth Southgate's not picking him for England, despite him being an English striker playing in the Champions League. He's never even had a sniff. So that tells me more than I care to admit about how good Miller is, because we all know what a good judge of player Gareth Southgate is. Onomar with a chance to grab a last-minute winner for us. It was the last kick of the game, and there's a last-ditch slide tackle. It has ended nil-nil. Boring, boring Leicester. Let's go and qualify for the knockout rounds of the Champions League. By fingers crossed, just easing our way past Zenit. Not even offered an interview. Well, now I hope that we qualify for the knockout rounds at the expense of them. Inter are my new nemesises. So, fingers crossed a win for us today and a win for Benfica. And Inter can do one, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> We've not even played the game yet. Benfica have already beaten Inter and qualified, thus qualifying us as well. So we have two games to spare. We've qualified from the same group that Inter were in. They've been knocked out of the Champions League. They didn't even shortlist me for the job. How do you like them apples, Inter? <laughs> All of which, of course, means that our game against Zenit doesn't really matter. I know we're supposed to try and win the group, but uh, who cares? Um, we're going to get knocked out as soon as we face anyone good anyway. It doesn't matter. I'd rather that happen sooner rather than later. We're not going to win the Champions League this year. So I want to get knocked out ASAP so we can focus on the league. So we've made a couple of changes. Yancis comes in in goal. Who is now a UK citizen? I don't know if that means... I don't really understand. Does he now count as homegrown? Because he's got other nationalities as English. Is the fact that he's just become English going to allow us to bring Adonis back into the squad in January? Let me know down in the comments. I'm not sure how that works. Amavi comes in at left back. Insua comes in at centre back. And what else did I do? Gardner comes in up front at the expense of Miller. So let's get into the game. We are going on control and flexible today. We're really pushing the boat out to try and score some Champions League goals. Um... I mean, I've not made... There's not that many surprises. I think it's a bit of an exaggeration saying it's a surprise. We've changed our goalkeeper, swapped a centre-back, and swapped a striker. It's not that much of... It's not like we're playing a bunch of kids. We're just trying a couple of players who are on the cusp of getting into the first team anyway. And, I mean, Miller is on the verge of being dropped. Gardner might be one of the people who comes in to replace him. It might be Watts. It might be Gardner. Uh, but that's a decision I'm currently in the process of making. I don't know who my best centre-back to play alongside Panzo is. So it's reasonable for me to try someone else there. Gardner's already put us 1-0 up after 13 minutes. <coughs> I'm so, so excited about it. That it's making me cough. You've had, you've had singing, dancing and coughing on this episode. What more could you possibly want? It's a lovely finish from Gardner. So just played over his shoulder, takes it down nicely, tucks it into the bottom corner. That's the sort of goal Jonathan Miller was scoring when he used to score goals. Not so much now. As it stands right now, we're going into that final game of the group against Inter. Pretty much already winning the group. Um, I'm not sure... How, does it, how do they differentiate who finishes top of the group? If we go and lose to Inter and Benfica beat Zenit, does it go on goal difference or does it go on um, head to head? Let me again. Let me know down in the comments. I know nothing. I could look at the rules. I'm not going to look at the rules. You know I'm not going to look at the rules. So I don't. I'm not. I think we're ahead on our head to head with Benfica, maybe, but they're better than us on goal difference. So what we could really use today is two or three more goals in this second half, and then we should be fairly comfortable going into that final game against Inter. Which, to be honest. I might not show you now. We might go a little bit further because it was it's only like two games away. If we get the season moving on, moving forward a little bit more, I don't think we need to show a nothing game against Inter, who are a nothing club who don't even want to shortlist me. Is my beard pointy today? What's 
going on there. Gardner's just scored another beauty. I tell you what, Tony Gardner, we talked about him an episode or two ago as an option as an attacking midfielder for us, but he is making a strong argument today for getting a couple of starts up front because it's been two lovely finishes. We haven't had a, a finisher for a little while. We create, we still create chances. We just don't have anyone who tucks them away the way Gardner is today. But that's two lovely finishes. He's on for a hat-trick and he's on the ball again. Um, yeah, he doesn't... Oh, he wins the ball back though. And almost scored an absolute beauty. If he'd have scored that one, then I'm pretty sure he does become my first choice striker for a few games. Because... He's, he's looking very, very lively. Trying to take his chance in a way that Cesar isn't really. And there he is, Gardner. There is his hat-trick. Uh, I'm pretty sure that man starts the next game. It's just whether he partners any three, really, from Cesar, Miller and Watts. Because Cesar's had his six or seven games now. Scored a couple of goals. I mean, he is creating today. Has he got all three assists? Perhaps this is our partnership for a little while. Perhaps we don't mess with this. If Cesar's creating all the goals, he's got two of the three assists for Gardner today. And the game is still... We've still got half an hour left. Onomar now in midfield to Moya. Moya's very, very deep and just about gets away with quite a risky pass. But Amavi's in tons of space. Plays it over the top to Cesar. Is he going to go it alone? He does and possibly should have tried to find Gardner who is in lethal form today but Onomar with the corner I'm not even sure who that went towards that moved lightning quick but it is Moya again very very deep finds Portanova who is just waiting for someone to move around him I mean he's not in any rush and the move ends I think we probably need to be looking into making some substitutions for once we don't need to change the strikers because they're both playing very well Moya not so much so let's Let's bring Suto on, get Onomar in behind the front two, get Suto back into midfield where he belongs. Um, he is a natural central midfield player now. I'm also going to take off Porton over for Marco. And I tell you what, we may as well bring on Kostic for Panzo. Give Panzo a little rest for 20 minutes. We've won this game. We may as well see what Insua and Kostic are like as a partnership. Their, their combined age is probably younger than me which is terrifying to be in the Champions League, but very bright for the future of Leicester. And we've now all but won our group because we're now ahead of Benfica on goal difference. I'm pretty sure we're ahead of them on head-to-head. -head. And with 13 points on the board before we even have to go to Italy. Ha-ha, <laughs> ha-ha, Inter. Almost said ha-ha, Italy. Got nothing against Italy. Inter are now on my nemesis list, though. But that was a splendid result. Thumbs-ups for everybody. And on that subject, if you have enjoyed today's episode, please make sure you leave one of those thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.